Hi and welcome, my name is Marcin and on this channel I share Photoshop tutorials. In today's video I want to talk about Clone Stamp, which is together with Healing Brush, one of the two essential retouching tools in Photoshop. So at first I'm going to tell you how does it work, what's the system behind this, uh, what's the difference maybe with a Healing Brush tool and then we are going to see how we can use it. So first I'm going to move to this weird looking file just to make sure we understand how does the healing brush, uh, I'm sorry, of course clone stamp in this case works. So I always, always when I use uh, retouching tools, whether it's healing brush or clone stamp, I want to work on the new empty layer. The reason why, because I always want to be non-destructive. So when I do mistakes, when I'm not happy with the result, I always can remove this empty layer and start all over again. And it's also easy when we need to erase some things or anything else. It's easy to do it on the new empty layer. So I like to call the new layers clean. So when it comes to Clone stamp, when we choose it, of course, when we work on the empty layer, we always have to choose to work current below. We cannot work just on the current layer because it's empty. So I'm choosing current below. We have uh, two ways of working. So we can work with any brush we're going to choose. And these uh, brushes usually will be some round brush. So we can work with hard edged brush or soft edged brush and we will see the difference. So what's the system behind a clone stamp? When we use the clone stamp, when we clone something, for example, from this empty white space over here, so I'm pressing outer option and cloning this, what I do, I clone one, the texture, and two, the color. These two elements are cloned, which is pretty much everything. When it comes to healing brush, I only copy the texture and then the color gets automatically adjusted. So when it comes to clone stamp, I copied the texture and the color from here. If I apply it somewhere else, so it was soft edged brush this time. When I apply it here, as you can see, I apply it exactly in the shape of the brush. I applied the new texture, which is flat compared to this noisy texture over here and applied new color. If I would change the brush hardness to 100, as you can see, it would be different. And I can also, as I move over it, as you can see this cross above, I move it going along. So I copy exactly the mirror picture that I cloned here and I applied here. So it's mirror picture what I did here. Also, when it comes to the color, when I get it from here and apply it here, the texture on the both sides is exactly the same, but color is different. And this thing uh, we would not be able to do using healing brush. And we can compare this now. If I would choose healing brush, and then I take the sample here and apply it here. As you can see, color doesn't change. So this is the difference because healing brush color automatically adjusted, clone stamp color is applied. So not only the texture, but together with the color, just like this. So what is the use of this in a real retouching life example? So first of all, as always, I create new empty layer, which I will re rename to clean. And first, uh, let's try to do it just to compare starting with healing brush. So if I would work with healing brush, I'm taking the sample. And as you can see, now the texture perfectly adjusted to the new area and the color automatically adjusted. And you can see how this Adobe 
or rather Photoshop engine in this case, struggle a little bit here with adjusting the color. It's quite good, I must say, um, for this task it's uh, rather simple because and the shape, the texture is rather big and color is still not so complicated. But if we want to make sure that we don't get these uh, difficulties with this color, we could choose Clone Stamp and we can start with Hard-Edged hard -edged Brush at first. And with the clone stamp, what you can see as we clone and apply, we don't get the color confusion because the color comes from this area. So it's not automatically adjusted, but it comes from the new area. For this sort of task, for sure working with hard edged brush would be better in adjusting the texture because when we work with soft edged brush we might actually destroy the texture so when we work with specific texture it's sometimes better to increase the hardness to 100% and still we can see the transition because of working with hard edged brush so how to deal with this transition we can change it to soft edged brush and try to nicely blend this in after but then of course, the price is that we might lose some texture. That's why we always have to think what tool is uh, better for the certain task. And you can see on this side, we have some uh, bigger difference with the color here. We're using um, healing brush here, less difference because we are using uh, clone stamp. It's probably not done perfectly. You can see it here. But as I said, depends on the task, uh, we will choose the tool. So what is the usage on the portrait image, for example? Starting with the new empty layer, I will rename this to clean and let's uh, zoom to some difficult area where we have a lot of uh, different texture. So we have this hair over here. How I could uh, clean this here? I want to see it wasn't Right, so once again, I'm starting with new empty layer and I will start with healing brush. So if I would start with healing brush here, take the sample from here, not too bad. Once again, it copied the texture in a really nice way, but it does get confused with the color over here because when we have the hair, the color is brighter and the skin is a little bit darker. So sometimes, once again, when the task is too difficult, too confusing, we can try to use clone stamp. In this case, maybe not too soft, not too hard edged brush uh, to have some balance. And now doing this, as you can see, I'm duplicating also the color, but as the brush is not really hard, I might affect some of the area here. So ruin, the texture itself, but the color could be matched a little bit better. Not always the case, that's why it's important to see what will work better for me. For this task, does a healing brush will work better or maybe clone stamp. Of course, when it comes to the edge, a clone stamp has this amazing advantage when we want to blend this in. We have a lot of hair here. We don't want to retouch one by one. We could use big size of the brush and just try to paint softly to blend it all in. As you can see, really nice effect. And this is what we would be not able to do with the healing brush. Also great when it comes to hair retouching because of the features that clone stamp has. So we copy both color and texture is retouching the hair. It's so important when we will be retouching the hair because we need to be precise. And when we would be using a healing brush, as you can see, a lot of problems because here, especially, we have so much of a different texture. As you can see, it simply doesn't work. But when I do step back, switch to clone stamp, I can nicely cover it and copy it. So this is how I work with clone stamp. This is the difference between clone stamp and healing brush as well. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope from now on clone stamp will be less confusing. You know what's behind this. 
you know how does it work and if you are still confused feel free uh, to leave your questions in the comment also if you want to learn a little bit more if you want to know more about what i do check the links in the description you can find my portfolio there you can also find there my website with premium retouching courses so if you are interested in professional retouching this might be something for you for now thank you for watching and see you next time